Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the pleasure of working on a Survivor. It's a huge one. This is a Penn 12 uh, 0 uh, Senator fishing reel that uh, shows a lot of history on this one. It's, uh, it's not a shelf sitter. This one's uh, geared to go fishing. And a, a very unusual, I'm going to think, homemade handle here. It uh, has a long extended uh, bracket for leverage uh, and it has a Schwinn bicycle handle on it. So uh, that in and of itself kind of probably tells quite a story, but I can imagine you've got quite a bit of cranking power here. I'm not quite sure how it's all set up. Very interesting. And that in itself is probably a good story. But we're going to show you today how to take this reel apart if you have one of these. We'll show you how to service it and how to keep this one fishing again. Again, this one isn't uh, a beauty contest winner by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, you know what? Uh, Scott found this one out in the, uh, uh, the West Coast. He had asked me if I was interested in purchasing it, which I was, and uh, we're going to give this one the full treatment. We're going to get out there fishing again. So you saw the handle. We're going to remove the handle screw and uh, washer, and then we have this huge star adjuster. And one of the things you're going to see underneath here is that this is an inset washer. There's a lip around it here. And uh, that enables you to uh, keep some water out of the, uh, the reel itself. Of course, these things are going to be in the, the uh, fight. You're going to have ocean spray all around them. You've got a lot of line you're going to be cranking, which is going to be carrying water. And uh, all of the activities associated it means that water is going to get inside that reel to some extent and uh, you want to prevent that as much as you can and this is a nice design feature uh, with that so this reel was made so that you could take the um, drag washers out and service them without pulling the side plate I'll show you that in a moment right now I'm just using a piece of steel wall a little bit of um, penetrating oil actually to just kind of clean that off. I think you're going to see that throughout this reel. We're going to have to do that. We also have a couple of tabs that have been bent in. The easiest way to do them is just kind of go to a bench vise. Probably it hit something. And just press down with the bench vise and generally you can get them. Well this is going to need a little bit more cleaning so I'm going to go put some polish on there. I'm going to use a metal polish. I use, in this case I'm using a uh, Turtle Wax uh, Automobile Polish, Chrome Cleaner. And one of the things that's nice about this reel, and one of the things that makes this reel a treasure, is that it has been made with quality parts. And something like this with the chrome plating on them, well, that was done the right way. There you go, it shines up nicely with that chrome polish. And uh, when you make it with quality parts, they tend to last. All right, I put that piece into my tray. We're going to pull the screws off of here. Now, it's probably been quite some time since the screws uh, have been removed, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some penetrating oil around the fronts of the screws, and I'm also going to put it around all of the places where those screws connect. I don't know what's going to be able to get into them right away, but I think as soon as you break the screw, some of that uh, penetrating oil should... Uh, should live in there and we should be fine. You can see that uh, you've got a lot of uh, just uh, general uh, wear and tear on it. Here's your first cap washer that came out. We'll keep that together for a moment here. But uh, if they fall out, don't panic. And one of the best things you can do if they start falling out is and you're starting to lose your thought in terms of where they go, is go ahead and pull the schematic for the wheel. In this case, the uh, schematics are available right at penparts. Uh, uh, I wanted to say penparts.com. It's now mysticparts.com. And uh, if you go ahead and grab that uh, website, you can go on and get basically any, uh, any pen schematic. But particularly, you should get the ones that you're working on a reel and you're unfamiliar with the reel. That's a great resource. So I just got a call the other day. Somebody wanted the manual for a reel. Well, a lot of the reels that are listed on that site also have both 
the real specs, if you want to know things like um, uh, when it was made and so on. And it also has a manual. So uh, check that site out if you haven't already. Now I just laid those two screws on my table there to bring up a point that says when you're doing this pay attention to how you take these screws out and where they come and go from because there's two different sizes of screws. The cross posts get the longer screw, the real seat get the shorter screw. In all cases those screws go into my parts tray because I don't want to lose them. They're very hard to find and they're expensive when you do find them. So take the time to organize your search and uh, that'll help you when you go to reinstall. And we have two more screws here. Look at the size of these tie downs for the uh, rod, uh, rod clip. The rod clip is in the box here, but those are probably quarter inch bolts. Crazy. All right, last one here. And that, that's going to enable us to open up the center. It's going to make cleaning of the wheel easier. And I think we can, well, normally you would be able to walk this off. Well, there you go, cut it off. That didn't go far, nobody needs to panic. One of the things that you can find when you do this reel is that the inside of this reel is just about the same as the smallest reel that the pen made at the time, the pen uh, nine. And mechanically the design is near identical. The difference is that these are of course much bigger, much more rugged parts, uh, but the design remains the same. You have the eccentric with the spring, you have the uh, jack, there's a yoke under here, pinion gear, bridge, main gear, and drag stack, which keeps wanting to fall away. Well, I'm going to shut the camera off for a moment. I'm going to take the other chrome pieces off. I'm going to do a little bit of cleaning on the chrome, just like you saw me do on that uh, star adjuster. And then we'll come back and uh, we'll show you how to service the inside of this reel. Okay, so that took quite some time. But we'll just review quickly what we were able to do. I took off every piece of metal on this. I used the uh, chrome polish to, uh, to clean up the bars as best I could. And they did shine up pretty nice. I also used the pen rod and reel cleaner on the back side, the black side here. That restored some of the uh, luster to that uh, piece and uh, well I'm going to move over we did a little bit we cleaned the insides of the spools and as best we could on the rim leaving that line on there just in case I'm not certain when that line was put on I would probably recommend that uh, you go ahead and replace this but I'm going to leave that to the new owner to figure that out all right well we said we have a drag stack that you can actually service from the outside we're going to show you how to take the reel apart completely. We want to get some of this corrosion off of here. We want to clean up the gears inside, check the drag washers, and get it ready to go fishing again. So we're going to start by removing the four big bridge screws. You'll notice that the um, bearing is slipped in. That's not a problem. And we're just going to take these off. And if this follows the traditional pen pattern, which it should, the two top screws will be partially threaded. The two bottom screws will be fully threaded. Just remember that when it's time to reinstall. Now when I did go to that case, wow, those are in. I did notice that there were short screws and long screws on the bridge, on the real seat, and where those um, lugs attach. So when I went to reassemble the other side, I made sure to put them back in the proper position. And you're going to want to do the same here. Well, we have a fully threaded screw. This should be a partially threaded screw. If it's not, chances are that the reel was serviced at some time and somebody just put it backwards. That happens more than it should. But 
the idea with these partially threaded screws is there's a spring that's going to ride on here and uh, what happens with the partially threaded ones is it kind of enables you to uh, have that spring go up and down without catching on any of the ridges. For those four are out, I'm going to cut my hand now because there's got to be an anti-reverse dog spring in here somewhere. And we just want to make sure that the spring doesn't go far. Okay, I think this is going to come off. It does. Here's your anti-reverse dog spring. It's a flat spring. Clean that up, put that in here. And now you can see why you want to take that off. Even though the, the exterior might say it looks pretty good, well, you always want to check because chances are it's going to need a good cleaning inside. I can't tell you how many times folks say, oh yeah, the reel's just been serviced. And while you go inside and you find a lot of evidence that their definition of just service than yours varies. All right, we're going to take this off. I'd like to move that to the up position, make sure it's up. We can just walk that off the, the stud. And you can see that we've got old dried grease on the inner case. So we're going to wipe that down. And you can see that's, that's quite aged and dirty. Not quite sure what it is either in terms of grease. All right, while I'm doing this, I want to recommend to you that you subscribe to my channel. If you stayed with me this far, it's obviously that you've had a, an interest in fishing wheels and wheel repair. And that's what I cover in my channel. I cover all kinds of things, but predominantly how to take a wheel apart, service it, and get it back working again. And uh, if you like that kind of thing, subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting the video. I work on all kinds of reels today. We're working on one of the biggest reels out there. And tomorrow we might be working on one of the smallest ones for fresh water. So just uh, go ahead and hit the notification button. You'll see what it is that I post and you'll be able to see whether that's something you want to watch or not. All right, the inside's clean. The outside we've cleaned. Put that off to the side. We have a burring that came out, probably came out because of all that grease just used acting kind of as a glue to uh, Kind of hold that onto the, the pinion gear there. There's a little bearing shield there. That came off in the wipe down. And I oil my bearings, I don't grease them. I'm going to put that shield right back on. Probably going to wind up on the post of this going in. Let's just do this piece by piece then. We've got a lot of heavy grease on the yoke that could slow down the the pinion gear, so let's get that off. Get it off of both sides. Notice how thick this yoke is compared to some of the smaller reels. They're all over-engineered. And unlike uh, I do most of the time, I'm just leaving these parts right on the bench here. But uh, if it starts to get very busy here, I am going to take them out. So I'm using that steel wool again to buff off the greening on the jack here. Underneath we've got that old grease. So make sure you check both sides as you do this. If you have a question on this reel or any reel, if you leave it in the comment section, I will try and answer that question for you. Some of them I just plain out don't know, and I'll let you know that. But if I, if I do know the answer, I will try to assist you. Maybe you're stuck on reassembling a reel or something. Maybe you're thinking about buying a reel and you're wondering about a, a certain... Uh, characteristic of that reel. Well, if I know it, I'll let you know and uh, see what we can do. Getting the greening off that anti-reverse dog now. You want to check these parts as you're doing them. For example, this anti-reverse dog has a, uh, a beak that's going to intersect with the gear sleeve. You want to make sure that's nice and crisp and not, not worn or worn over. And then we've got this big pinion gear here that's just full of that old grease. So one of the things I like to do with that is spray it down with a penetrating oil to act as a degreaser. And then we're just going to work to clean this. So on the outsides of it I just typically I will grab a screwdriver and just run it through the channels to pull all that old grease out. And you'll notice that I have a towel under there. 
the towel is not only catching the penetrating oil that's kind of leaking off of it, but it's also catching the grease so that that doesn't expand anywhere. This is a nice stainless gear, I believe. I believe it's stainless. It is a nice gear. <laughs> Again, heavy construction of the reel. When you come through there the first time with that, then go through with a brush and you'll see how that brush just pulls all the rest of it out. You want to do that to ensure a nice smooth operating gear. And you can see all the old grease is just coming to that paper towel and kind of getting flicked out of the way there. Up top here we do have grease in that main slot. Can't get a brush or anything in there. Use a cotton swab. Cotton swabs are great because they're absorbent. So when you pull through it's actually going to grab onto the, uh, the cotton that's on there. All right, that's a nice pinion gear. Go ahead and set that off to the side. Let's go get the big honking main gear out of there. And this is, of course, this has got a lot of grease on it as well, right? So I wear a glove on my non-working hand just to keep most of that grease off of me. Happens in almost every reel. And now we can pull this whole stack out. I think this reel's probably got the old asbestos washers in it. But we're going to find out. But we want to make sure we take care of that. And we take care of the servicing of the bridge here. On the servicing of the bridge, there should be a pin holding this in. There it is. And you want to push that pin through to release a hole. Well, it's coming through just a little bit. This one's going to need to be tapped through. I use a dead blow hammer. I set that little pick so that it can act as a push. And I try to stabilize that bridge. I can get enough of that through. You can see where we've started to get it through. And I'll just take another knock or two to get this done. And that just came right through. Now we can remove the gear sleeve because you want to get all of that junk hiding under that gear. I get that off and cleaned before we go any further. Again, if you find very thick grease, go ahead and use that penetrating oil. Make sure you get it off. And then we have some, I'm um, not sure if it's tarnish, if it's corrosion, what it is, but we're going to go back to that chrome polish now and we're going to finish the bridge. There's no sense when you're spending the time servicing a reel not to do it completely. There's, you're probably going to be doing this thing once a year maybe, maybe even less. If you do it, do it right. Take the extra few minutes to finish the, the entire cleaning of this reel. We're going to do the back side as well. And some of that stuff's plain just not going to clean up. It's tarnish, it's lost plating. But do the best you can. All right, that looks a whole lot better. These reels are made for very big fish. Uh, before the advent of braid and some of the modern lever drag, lever drag reels, these were it. These were the top of the line reel that you could possibly buy for big game fishing. The big game fishing, of course, was tuna and shark and marlin and things like that. And big fighting fish. All right. One little quick run through of the center of this shaft. You want to make sure that you clean all sides of it. Once it's clean, check the bottom of this. This is where that anti-reverse dog is going to ride. We have talked about that before. You've got a beak on that. It's going to sit like that to stop the reel. And just check it to make sure that they're all nice and squared up, that it's not going to be a problem stopping the reel because it uh, can't catch. We 
with that in, go ahead and put the pin back in. It should simply push back in. And when you're pushing it back in, make sure you clear the ridge on the shoulder. It doesn't look like much, but it'll stop that main gear and everything else from going through it. All right, give it a spin. Make sure that it spins nice. It does. It's nice and tight. Let's come on back to this main gear then. We want to remove this whole stack. I keep them together as much as I can. I'm pushing them all through. All right. And set the main gear aside. This is your bottom. These are the asbestos washers. Your bottom, your second, your third, your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. There you go. That's your drag stack. The asbestos washers don't get anything. They're just a hard fabric washer. They're non-permeable. They like break break metal metal material there. Break. Uh, on cars, and you don't really want to grease them, it's not going to help anyway. All right, I'm just coming through now with a piece of steel wool, light polish. We'll wipe these down before we put them in. But I just want to get all of the material that may have transferred from that drag washer to the metals. If you lost concentration and you weren't paying attention to how the drag washers go in, go get the schematic. The schematic will show you. It starts with a keyed washer, ends with a keyed washer, it has two uh, eared washers in between. I'll show you as we go to reinstall. Right now it's just like everything else on this reel, the majority of this service has to do with removing the old grease. Making sure that you clean it all up and get it back serviced again, ready to go. And again, there's not much difference to this reel other than size and how big the pieces and parts are and how strong the materials are than it is from a Long Beach 60 or a Pen 9 or what have you. Notice this last washer is a bell shape. It's not a flat washer. Don't make the mistake of putting this one in anywhere in the stack that goes on the top. You'll notice that it's curved and it belongs that way. All right, just going to wipe this down quickly and we'll be ready to do a reinstall, reinstallation. We'll check it all out, see how we did. If you like this video, please like it. If you want to see more, again, I urge you to subscribe. Thank you to everybody that's put us over the 20,000 mark in subscriptions. I really do appreciate that. All right, this table is getting very busy, but I got one more piece I want to clean up, and that's the main gear. I'm going to do the same thing here that I did before. I'm going to just kind of let the penetrating oil do its thing in terms of dissolving some of that shellac grease. I'll grab a new towel. Go ahead and get the grease off the bottom. And the face of it. Wipe down the insides. And we'll just use that brush to pull through any of the old grease lying in those teeth. And you can see how it goes onto the paper towel. That keeps it off your bench so that the next reel you're working on doesn't pick it up. And it gets it out of the reel itself. All right, we've got that done. Let's go rebuild the reel then. Let's go put it back together again. We're going to grab our brush for the grease. I'm using Penn's Precision Reel Grease here. And this is a good time. Well, actually, it's a good time with what we have left <laughs> to tell you to take pictures along the way. Hopefully you're not watching this video because you started your project and you left it and something ran amiss. But if you take the pictures along the way, you're going to know where the pieces and parts are from an orientation standpoint. You're going to have a good idea how the assembly goes and it's going to save you an awful lot of time in uh, the rebuild. All right, I've got a lot of grease on here. It's not all grease, but it's a lot of grease. 
Interestingly enough, what we were saying before, that little stud is out. Funny how that one little piece right there can stop everything from going in smoothly. Just going to grab my pliers to pull that down that last little bit. That should do it. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and reinstall then. Round fabric or asbestos washer first. Keyed washer next. The keyed washer is the rectangular center completely round on the outside. Doesn't matter which washers you put in, so let's go grab another one from there. Next one up is the eared washer. And these alternate keyed and eared. So you have one more keyed washer than you do eared washer, and you have a cap washer. Keyed washer. Eared washer. Final keyed washer, cap washer. That is your stack. That's how it came out. If it falls out, don't worry about it. You got you. You have access to that from the front of the reel, and you can just go ahead and reinstall. Just wanted to buff up. There was one little piece that was hanging out here. It was just annoying me. Piece of grease. You put the bearing back in. Now this part. We want to just make sure that we put good grease onto the yoke on the shoulders, both sides. We want our pinion gear, just like we did with the main gear. We want to put a lot of grease onto that. You don't need to overload it. If you overload it, it's just going to throw it off. But you do want to get enough in there that it's going to make a difference. And it's going to spread as the reel cranks. All right. Okay. Looking into our box of tricks now, we're looking for the two big springs. Those go in the cavities of the reel. One on each side. And we want to take our yoke pinion gear, the slot faces you. Push that down, and you want to take your jack and hook that over the stud. Make sure that the slot is on the other stud. Once you've done that, you can push the whole piece down. Take a fully threaded screw to the outside. And now we're going to load our whole stack assembly. And if, again, if that piece falls out, don't get too excited. I'm going to hold it like that. Going to go for our anti reverse dog that sits in there. Kind of doing a little tango over here, trying to hold this all together to kind of prevent other things from falling out. And then we want that flat spring. Flat spring goes on top of the dog, behind the stud, and up along the wall or shoulder of this side plate. Just trying to find the shorter side. You don't have to rebend this to flat. It's got the, got the tension in it. Again, just trying to keep this together. It's not that easy. Hand is probably on the wrong side of the reel, just trying to show you. Side of the wall, around the stud, on top of the anti reverse dog. Once you do that, rotate the bridge all the way around and line up that slot for the screw. Then come over to the other side. This is probably off camera. Over the other side in a couple of turns. Just to get that screw started. And sometimes the best efforts of mice and men, huh? Alright. 
fully threaded screw on the other side. Get that one started. Partially threaded screw up top. Get that one started. Partially threaded screw on the other side. And you're doing this to keep equal, equal tension on the bridge. This one can go down fully and then do an X pattern. Come over to the top on the other side. Come on back down to this side. Come on over to the other side. Just like that. <laughs> and then let's go put them all back together again. So we've got the, the not all, some of them stayed in there. So the keyed washer. one of these. Then go find that bell washer. That's the one with the curve. I'm going to hold all of those in with this. All right. So there we go. Looks a whole lot better. The only thing that needs lube now is a little bit of grease onto the shoulders here, which we couldn't get before when we were loading that in. That's your completed side plate. If you want to turn it now, you'll see that you're turning fine. You're hearing the click clack of the anti-reverse and you're looking in there at nice clean components. Next up then, we're going to use the side plate here. And we need to this through in terms of which one's lining up with which. So let's put a little bit of grease onto our shafts on the spool. I'm going to load that in. Already oiled, burning. Bring the spool on. You want to notice that the front side of this has the the hook. So when we're going to put this on, it's going to go like this. And let's just looking for the bar here. All right, let's get this situated properly. Move your gear to the off position. That's easier to load this in. Let's bring this whole thing together and marry that up. This one should come through now. I just want to make sure that we're not twisted on it. Grab a long screw for that. Align that with your crossbar. I've made the mistake of putting one in one side and one in the other. That's why I said we want to check where we are with this orientation wise. I'm just going to use that to get this started. That'll be good. I have the other harness lug goes up here, so before I do too much more, I want to get both of those started. I don't clamp these all the way down. And once I get those started, the rest kind of go easy. Just remembering that the small screws go on the bottom. We have two of the large screws there, so let's go down to the bottom. That'll square this up. Start with the one in the middle. You need to use a pin to center the holes. We're getting towards the end of this. There we go. Two more shorts. Folks asked me about using a mechanical screwdriver. I'm not a fan of that. 
they can over torque and particularly on a reel like this this reel tends to split the rings the side plate rings if you over torque because it's got that taper in it so just be careful if you're using one of those and if you are using one of those make sure that you stop the, the screw short of completion and just walk it the rest of the way in All right, two more screws, three more screws. Let's get those done. Thank you for staying with me. This is not a short <laughs> short course in terms of how to do this, right? This is kind of the, the full-out servicing of the reel. I hope you've learned something from it. And if you're a big game fisher, this reel is still one of the ones that you can use to go get the big fish. Two more, one on each side here, one more up top in the cross post. Remember, those are the longer screws now. Then we're going to put that Schwinn bicycle handle on. We'll give it a test. we see how it does. All right, I'm just starting to drive these home now. I mean, I know we left some of these loose. Rugged design, beautiful reel. One more here. Let's go grab that bicycle handle. piece. Credit to whoever designed this piece. Did a nice job. They squared this out. They even tapered the Pressure on top of your adjuster. Your handle nut goes on next. I'll clean this adhesive off here. I'm not quite sure what that adhesive is, but I'll certainly clean that off. That's a distraction. Make sure that you tighten down your drag washer. Use that starter adjuster to do that. Make sure that gets tightened down before you tighten down this handle screw. If you don't, it's going to slide away. That may cause an issue. Just looking for that screw that goes on next. It just fell off the side of my bench. I put that screw in. It's ultimate test time. Hopefully we did it all right. I'm going to take the glove off at this point because, well, I'm seeing that I'm starting to transfer some grease to this white line. So I don't want to do that too much. Just give it a little bit of a buffing here that cleaned up nicely. We are in free spell. And look at this thing just kind of wail away. What a beautiful turning reel that is. You want to go forward with that. Now you engage the gears. Look, look at the crank on this one. Smooth, steady as she goes. Well, there you go. Well, interestingly enough, before we end, I just took the uh, adhesive off of this and I realized this is a Cortez handle. So Cortez makes upper end modification kits for a lot of the pen reels. And uh, they've obviously made one for the 12 hour. Very interesting. Well, hope you've enjoyed that. To our first, ascent, uh, first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.